Hello and welcome to First Post. I'm Alison LaGrange coming to you live from Durban, South Africa. Now in our top story, Israel has carried out a targeted strike on Hezbollah stronghold in Beirut. Israel says the strike has killed a Hezbollah commander and is revenge for the Golan Heights rocket attack that killed 12 children. Now, for more on this, we have with us David Menser, who is a spokesperson for the government of Israel. Welcome to First Post. Good to be with you. Thank you. Now, Israel has launched a strike on Hezbollah stronghold in Beirut. It says that the strike was in revenge for the recent Golan Heights attack that killed 12 children. Could you give us more details of this operation? Uh, Yes, of course. Uh, I would just slightly correct you there when you say revenge. This is an act of defense. You know, this country was created in 1948 Mm -hmm. in the same way as India, uh, as a safe homeland uh, for the Jewish people to get away from the uh, years and decades and centuries long of anti-Semitism. This country was designed to be a safe haven for Jewish people. Uh, With Iran on our doorstep, constantly threatening to destroy this country, uh, we will have we have no other option but to defend ourselves against these terrorists. Now, just yesterday, I was in Migdal Shamsh, uh, in the north of our country, where 12 young people, just 12 children, were playing football on a Saturday afternoon. A Hezbollah rocket was fired at them, and it blew them literally to pieces, literally to pieces. We have an obligation to defend this country, That's what India would do. That's what any normal country would do. And that is precisely what we are doing. Now, Israel uh, claims that a senior Hezbollah commander, Ford Shakar, has been eliminated in the strike. Now, he reportedly orchestrated the strike on the Golan Heights and was a strategic advisor to Nasrallah. But Hezbollah says that he escaped and is still alive. What is the latest that you can tell us about these contradicting claims? Well, let me share with you conclusively that he's been eliminated. That's what our government has released. That's what our army has released. This was a successful strike, an extremely targeted strike with extremely minimal uh, uh, collateral damage to any of the area, to any of the other people in that area. Uh, It was targeted at him, it was precise, using precise intelligence, and he is no more. We have this responsibility to defend our people, it's the same that any other country has, and we will continue to do it. You know, we've got about uh, 60 to 80,000 people displaced in the north of our country. We've had 7,000 rockets from the Hezbollah terrorist organization. Uh, They've burnt close to 200,000 dunams of our land, Uh, for no other reason, just to uh, attack us. They don't want us here. They say very clearly they wish to destroy this country, but the days of uh, killing Israelis and expecting no response are long gone. We will defend ourselves. We will bring peace back to this region, and Hezbollah will be pushed back. But let's never forget that this is an adjunct. This is a unit of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard. Uh, They will be pushed back, and that's an obligation which the Israeli government has, which is backed by the overwhelming majority of the people living here. It's what every decent country would do, and that's what we did. Yeah. And uh, Lebanon, Hezbollah and Iran have responded sharply to uh, the strike. Is there a risk of a wider conflict breaking out after this uh, retaliatory strike? Or does this strike amount to a limited action against Hezbollah? Look, Lebanon can hardly be called a state when uh, it's not the Lebanese army in control of uh, southern Lebanon. It's Hezbollah, a terrorist organization. Uh, So it can hardly be um, called a state. And of course, Lebanon has been infiltrated by Iran. And every place where Iran Uh, puts their feet into, becomes a failed state. And that's precisely uh, what has happened in Lebanon. The international community should put pressure on Lebanon to no longer allow this terrorist organization to sit on our southern border, uh, on our northern border, on on Lebanon's southern border. They must be pushed back. We've got United Nations resolutions 
1559 and 1701, both of which say that um, Hezbollah should be nowhere near our border. This Iranian proxy should be pushed back behind the Litani River. That's the responsibility of the United Nations. They failed in that responsibility. They also, there is also a UNIFIL force, a United Nations, United Nations force on our northern border in uh, southern Lebanon. They're also uh, absolutely useless in preventing these uh, Hezbollah attacks. So in the absence of any of those players, international players, um, having an effect, we are having an effect. We will go to, no, we will spare nothing in defending our people. Absolutely. Now, meanwhile, uh, the U.S. has uh, defended Israel's retaliatory strike, saying that Israel has a right to defend itself, as you mentioned and stated earlier, this against Iran-backed threats. What are your thoughts on this? Look, the U.S. and Israel have been side by side, uh, shoulder to shoulder for decades and decades and decades. And I'll tell you why. It's because we have many shared values. We're a democracy uh, like India, a much smaller democracy, uh, but we're a, a democracy, the only democracy in thousands of, in hundreds of miles in any direction uh, in our part of the world. But it's not only uh, the shared values of democracy which we share with the US, it's also the shared threats as well. And Iran, uh, which is close to us in now in our neighborhood, it threatens us. But it, we're not the end game for Iran. Uh, we're just what they call the small Satan. They're after the big Satan. And we're just the stopgap between getting to the US and to other democracies and to Europe. So we're on the front line of this uh, Iranian uh, terror. Uh, we are uh, fighting them back. We're being fought on seven different fronts from this Iranian menace. But we will be successful. This country will be defended. Uh, there's only one. Jewish homeland in the entire globe, and it's here, right here, where I'm sitting right now, and it will be defended. Mm. Absolutely. And David, we have got uh, reports of um, Hamas chief uh, Ishmael Haniyeh, the killing in Tehran. How uh, do you think that this could impact the region and Israel's war against Hamas? Well, look, it's one of our uh, stated aims in this war. I can't comment on that uh, uh, event uh, particularly, but I, I can tell you that it's one of the stated aims of this war to destroy Hamas militarily and its governance uh, uh, capabilities, as well as bringing home our 115 hostages, of course, and making sure that Gaza can never be a threat to us again. So Hamas are an Iranian proxy. They have... Um, did a terrible attack on October the 7th. They, this war could end right now with Hamas if they gave back our hostages and laid down their arms. They refuse to do that. They keep walking away from negotiations. So Israel will have no other option but to, to con continue to wipe out the Hamas leadership. We've already done uh, that mm. uh, in Gaza and will continue to do that. Any of Hamas's senior personnel are legitimate targets. They're terrorists for us, they're terrorists for the US, and they're terrorists for India as well. Right. And on that, the war with Gaza has been raging for 10 months. What do you think is the path forward in this conflict? Where do you go from here? Look, we are coming to the closing stages of our war uh, against Hamas. We've wiped out 24 of their of their battalions. Uh, we've shattered them. Uh, Hamas uh, are running scared, uh, which is why they are, uh, for the first time, uh, agreed to further negotiations. We would like these negotiations to succeed. We hope they will succeed. We want to bring our people home. It's an open sore in Israeli society. Uh, the faces of their poor hostages and uh, their families are in front of our eyes every single day. It's the main item of news here in Israel, even if it isn't, unfortunately, in the rest of the world. We're going to um, do everything we can through negotiations or through military means to defeat this organization. We want to bring our people home. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, this war could end this afternoon by the time we put our children in bed if they lay down their arms and release our hostages. Hmm. David, thank you very much for being with us on First Post.
Really appreciate having you on the show. Thank you very much. And with that, we have come to the end of this broadcast. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to First Post. Across continents, one powerful news source. Bringing you diverse perspectives on the issues that matter. We go beyond the boundaries to give you that little extra about every sporting moment. So thank you for making First Post 5 million strong. We're counting on your support and you can trust us to bring you the news unfiltered and unvarnished. Climate change is on our doorstep. It's time for a revolution to take root. And it starts with 1.4 billion Indians. It starts with one tree. One tree for humanity. One tree for Mother Earth. One tree for our future. Project One Tree. A News 18 Network initiative. On the fifth day, the T20 World Cup run by the U.S. moved across to the West Indies. What can you expect? Hello, I'm Alice Green, coming to you from Durban, South Africa. Today, we have a special start with a report on India's system of the three o'clock. Hello and welcome to First Post America. I'm Eric Hamm, coming to you live from the nation's capital, Washington, D.C.